Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a new product announcement slash model showcase video for the new EastCoastArmory.com 3D printed 1-6 scale Converto airborne dump trailer. This model here is a new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line. This kit here is a full 3D printed kit and can be found on the link listed below as well as also in the video description. The models are sold specifically as an unassembled kit, however, like I often mention in these videos, I often take on commission build projects from vehicles ranging from 135th scale up to 16th scale. As for availability and pricing information, this would be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. This particular model that we have here, however, is for my own personal collection and is not for sale and or purchase. Now there's a lot to talk about in this video, so we're going to be going over the basic kit components as well as an unboxing portion, showing you what you get, as well as also I'm going to go over all the features and functions that this little model has, which is by the way pretty substantial. We'll be going over all this information in this video. Now before we go any further with the video, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around this model. And this model here is the Converto Airborne Dump Trailer. These units were developed by Converto Manufacturing back in 1943. Now like I mentioned in my other 1-6 scale trailer video, when the Jeep was first developed, a matching trailer was designed as well from Bantam. This is known as the T3. The T3 is a great trailer and was more than capable of doing the job. However, there was a certain niche that the T3 couldn't really do and that's where the Converto comes in. The Converto trailer was really more or less designed for engineering, but more specifically it was intended for airborne engineering operations. The overall size of the trailer is a lot smaller compared to the standard T3 from Bantam, and this unit here would definitely be able to fit better in something like a glider. Both the T3 and the Converto utilize a single axle to support the wheels. However, unlike the T3, which actually had a fully sprung leaf spring and shock absorber suspension, the Converto, on the other hand, was a rigid mounted suspension that was connected to the frame. Where the Converto really came in on its own had to do with its features. The Bantam trailer was a solid body design and was not meant to do any sort of tipping or dumping of its internal contents. The Converto, on the other hand, was. With a pull of a lever, the entire top portion can pivot downward and can dump its contents. Because of this, the Converto also featured an articulated rear tailgate, which would open up automatically with the pull of another lever. In addition to dumping out its contents, the Converto had the ability to mount on a oil drum and you could connect a tube to the drum and have it go through the tailgate via a small little hatch so you can actually pour the contents out without having to remove the tailgate hatch itself or to even dump the trailer bed. The rest of the fittings were basically the same as the T3. This would include the rear taillights, the reflectors, as well as also the lunette eye. The Converto, just like the T3, featured a folding stanchion leg to support the trailer when not hooked up to a main vehicle. Because the Converto was designed to plug into the US Willys Jeep, it also features a matching plug to connect into the circuitry. However, unlike the Jeep trailer from Bantam in which there are two safety chains that connect to two small little eyelets found on the tow hitch, the Converto is absent of this little feature for one reason or another. These trailers were adopted and fielded by the US military during World War II and the units were primarily procured again by the Army Corps of Engineers. Now because this was a niche item, not as many of these were produced compared to the Bantam pattern of T3. However, these units, a large number of them survived the war and after the war of course, almost all of them were surplused out. There are a good number of these things still floating around in existence today in one way, shape, or form or another. It's also relevant to point out that Converto manufacturing is still around and in operation today. 
Although their website's a little bit dated from the 1998 time period, they still produce a run of trailers and other specialty equipment. Now before we go any further with the video, let's go ahead and take a step back to when the model was first started in order to get a good idea on what the base starter raw kit gives you. And here's the kit at the start of the project. Here we have all of the components strewn out here on the table that are needed to assemble one of these Converto airborne trailers. Now just like with the other ECA full kits that have recently been released, this kit here is all comprised of 3D printed components. With of course the exception of the rubber tires which I will pan over and get in frame over here as well as a few of the other smaller fittings which I'll undoubtedly go over as I review these components. Starting with the largest printing will lead us to the main bed. Now the main bed has all of its major components pre-fitted. This would include the latches for the tailgate along with the brush guard mounts for the taillight and even the taillight mounts themselves are pre-printed on this component. As we go to the bottom we'll see here the detailing of the reinforcement braces are all present on this model and you can also see the other detailing of the framework which was carried over too. Now all the detailing that you see on this model here was directly influenced by a real Converto airborne trailer that I recently had the opportunity to see in person and to do a thorough photographic reference for. Now these straps here are actually hollow tubing just like they are on the real unit as are the side supports that we have here on the sides. Now on the bottom we do have some components integrally printed to this piece acting as runners. These two components here are the actual tailgate locks and here we have some other levers and functions which I'll go over once the unit is fully assembled. Moving from the main body now takes us to the frame. Just like with the other components, all of the frame's details are integrally printed to this component as really a one piece assembly. All of these other smaller fittings that we have here are comprising pieces for the lunette, the stanchion, as well as the dump components. You'll see that the axle is hollow through and through so you can run a steel rod across to mount on the wheels and all of the perforations are pre-printed on this component. Some of the other detailings you'll notice there are fastener details on the bottom portion here of the frame. These are to simulate the details of the fasteners of the little box which will be mounted in this section over here for use of the dump spring mechanism. Also you'll see that the frame is fully detailed in its shape and geometry and the piece is again as close as possible to the real unit that I was studying in person. Now the last of the major components is the tailgate Again, it's all one piece and has its reinforcement tubing added. And these tubes, I believe, are also hollow just like they are on the frame as well. You can also see the other cutouts found on the undersides of these pieces. Again, this is as per the real unit. And the fastener locations for the reflector as well as also the the tailgate mini door features are all present on this piece. From the tailgate now takes to some of the smaller assemblies. Starting with the taillights, these are the same components that are found on the EastCoastArmory.com product line as standalone units and are also found and supplied with the other trailer, Jeep trailer kits that are found on the ECA website. The pieces are hollow which makes them ideal in case anyone wants to RC convert a Jeep or some kind of a truck. You can run LEDs into this unit over here and have the lights fully functional. In addition to the bottom portions of the headlights, we, or the taillights I should say, we also have here clear 3D printed lens detailing. These again are the same units that are found on the other trailer that I recently did a video on. 
and being clear again if you, anyone wants to have the units light up the clear material will show the light through the lenses they do have their cat's eye detailing already present and one unit is the blackout while the other one is the standard tail light moving from the tail light now brings us to the dump control box this unit here is going to contain a spring which will keep the lever in the closed state but will of course be functional so that when you actuate the lever it will allow the rear portion of the unit to dump out here we have the reflectors these are similar to the ones found on the other Jeep trailer that I recently released however this unit here specifically for the Converto because it has two of the oval sets with one of the round units which is found on the rear tailgate section of the Converto trailer and from the reflector now brings us to the miniature sliding door and frame this unit just like with the other components are made to be fully functional and the unit will actually slide in this track over here allowing it to stay closed when not in use but you have the ability to display the unit with its open configuration again the reason for which I'll go over once the unit is fully completed moving along now brings us to the trailer's wheels. The wheels that we have here are the 1941 pattern Jeep wheel. These are again 3D printed and are also sold separately on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. The wheels have a 3D printed center hub with both interior and exterior detailing. Notice the rivet detailing found on the inside portion of the rim as well as the inner hub. In addition to that the actual tire itself it was made from casted rubber and the master was a 3d printed master so you do have lots of nice detailing present on this casting the rubber has a very nice good bounce to it and the the rubber that's utilized is actually a very good quality now the wheels are comprised of two pieces we have of course the wheel with the hub but there's also a small little hole here the hole is actually for another cast rubber component which is the little air fillet valve, if I can get that in focus. The little air fillet valve is also made from casted rubber, which once added gives you some very realistic detailing for this piece. Moving from the wheels brings us to a spool of wire. This is to be used for the taillight electrical circuitry that will be added once completed. And then we have some other small bits of hardware. The last 3D printed component to talk about is the actual plug for the Jeep socket. Now this one here is pre-painted. This one is a spare unit that I had on hand and I, I pre-painted in order to save some time when I actually get to a build like this. However, the actual kit ones are going to be just their basic HD material printing, which is a translucent material like this unit that we have here. The plug itself though, while painted, you can see the detailing that is present with both the fastener as well as the copper lead detailing that would be found on this component. The remainder of the components consist of a set of springs, some steel rods, some other small fasteners. All of these components will be utilized to assemble one of these Jeep trailers. And here's the model now in its completed state. Now the build itself went by without any sort of issues. It basically all came together out of the box. Now there have been a few other small little add-ons that were not mentioned in the unboxing portion that are going to be included with the set. And I'm gonna be explaining these as the video goes on. First and foremost, let me just start with the roll since this is a trailer. The roll is very, very smooth and fluid. And the rubber itself is definitely suitable for radio controlled use. If anyone has a RC Willy's Jeep and you want to hitch up something to it, something like this will definitely be able to work for you. While on the wheels we can see the rubber tire now with its weathering added and we can also see the little rubber valve stem which is present on the EC8 components. Now also like I frequently mentioned these wheels here are also sold separately in a set in case anyone wants to upgrade a Jeep of their own or have some other use for these pattern wheels be it another trailer or an artillery piece there are several options available, again, listed on the website, and you can have your pick. 
All of which, however, feature the exact same basic setup. We have a 3D printed rim, a cast rubber tire, and a cast rubber valve stem. From the tires now brings us to the front portion of the trailer, and this really has the most amount of gizmos and accessories on it, which I'll be going over. Starting with the lunette, this is of course is what ties and connects the trailer to the Jeep's tow hitch. Now the lunette is fully functional in that there's a spring, and the piece does have a little bit of a shock absorber type assembly to it. Again, just like the real units. For the stanchion, this can fold up and is fully functional. There is a small little fastener which you pull out and the component can now hinge in its closed state and with the same fastener you can put it through the hole locking it in place. Now there is a nut that is supplied with the set. I currently don't have it on here at the moment simply due because of the filming. Now from all of the reference material that I found on the Converto trailers there's not it doesn't seem that there is a dedicated pin that holds this component in place and every time I've seen one it's usually just a bolt. So a bolt is basically what's supplied. Compare this in contrast with the Bantam pattern or the M416 type trailers in which there is an actual dedicated lock pin. For the Convertos it appears that's just not the case. The fastener does the job but it's a little tedious in having to undo the bolt all the time. But again as, <laughs> apparently that's as per the real unit. From the stanchion now takes us to the dump itself. Now, first starting on this section here, you'll notice a small little angle piece that has a hole in it and this little bar that we have across. This is actually a safety component. There would be a small little, I guess like an eyelet or some kind of a angled little fastener and this would be strapped in this location here and this would prevent the dump bed from popping open during operation or when in transit. Whenever you want to actually dump the unit you remove the pin in the fastener and now this unhinges or unlocks the, the the tub from the frame allowing you to pivot it open and to dump out the contents. The detailing is fully present on the ECA piece. From the safety now takes us to the actual dumping clevis that we have here. The piece is 100% fully functional just like the real unit. We have a pull lever that has an articulated yoke that connects to a bar and this bar is housed in this box. Inside this box here is the is a spring and the spring is what gives you the strength and is what keeps everything in place again as per the real unit. The piece is what's used to lock the unit in place. Note if I pull on the lever the pin retracts and now this allows the dump or I should say the bed itself to hinge downward allowing the contents to flow out. When done you simply just hinge everything back and the piece if you notice is angled so that it should automatically knock the component back and lock it in place however just to prevent the paint from scraping I'm just gonna hold it back manually and let it go locking everything back as one unit. From the socket plug now takes us to the tailgate dump lever. The lever is located in this rear section over here and, can, and actuates the tailgate on the rear. This is done via a rod and linkage which runs across the section here of the pan frame and leads us right here to this large claw mechanism. Now if you notice this component here has a spring that is connected to it. The spring is housed in the shrouded guard and the spring is fully functional. The spring actually gives the force that keeps the claws in the closed position and prevents the tail hitch from opening up willy-nilly. The way this works is that you would actuate this lever here and it would pull down on this little section which would give you the mechanical leverage to open up and swing open these, lo these locks again allowing the tailgate to pivot. Now the two claws on either side are connected via a steel rod and on the model here you'll notice that they are actuated with each other. Once I pivot out of the way the tailgate can fully open up. To put it back in its place I just hinge the section open and the claws then lock back down onto the tailgate in their appropriate locations. From the claws now takes us to the 
tailgate itself. Now, the tailgate has two other features. First, you'll see a small little hatch that we have here. Now, I'll be going over that in a second, but basically it's a fully functional little hatch that has a small little hole found in the center. Also, you'll see on this section is a round reflector, and there are also two more trailer, US AFV trailer pattern reflectors on either side. These are again casted in HD material because of which they really have a nice glow to them and really have a nice realistic look. Now back to the little door, the reason for this is as follows. Say that you have a trailer and you need to tow something, I don't know, like an oil drum. Now of course this is a Vermock pattern oil drum, but you get the idea. Well, if you want to tow the oil drum and you want for whatever reason to deposit fluid behind the Jeep trailer, or if you want to irrigate something or what have you, well, you have the spout on the oil drum itself, and what you would do is you would put the oil drum inside of the trailer's bed, like so, and to connect the tube, you would first, well, take off the little plug on the trailer, plug your tube in, now, with that small little hatch in the back, you pivot that open, slide your tube through, and voila, you can now drop or dump whatever contents are in the oil drum behind your Jeep inside the trailer without having to open up the tailgate. Now, another feature that the tailgate has is the ability to be fully removed for one reason or another. To do this, you'll notice that on the top portion of the pivot hinges, we have two small little eyelets that are chain retained. Well, to, get, to remove the tailgate, you simply just pull out the eyelets, like I'm doing here, and the tailgate will then just pivot and unhinge itself like so. Now you have a pickup type bed without a tailgate for hauling or whatever type of <laughs> reason you might need for this type of application. But this feature is present on the ECA kit. Reinstallation is just as easy. You just hinge the little pivot lugs back into their appropriate locations. Put the eyelets back where they need to go. and your, your tailgate is now rehinged. And of course, then you could just simply just click it directly back into place. Now, moving on from the tailgate takes us to the rear tail lights. These are again, the exact same versions found on the other version of the ECA trailer. They have their blackout and convoy detailing on the lenses. Now, like I said before, these are printed in clear HD material, giving you the crisp detail found on the cat eye lenses. But because they're clear and because the cup portion is hollow, this allows a clever builder to mount in an LED or a bulb of some sort, patch it through the wiring, and if you have a radio controlled vehicle to tow this, you can actually patch it into the RC circuitry, giving you the functional tail light detailing. While on the lighting, you can see how it's configured. The lights run from the back portion of the tail light into this hollow cavity. This is true on the opposite side as well. They then emerge out from the frame, funnel into this little section here. Now, all of these channels, by the way, are hollow, just like on the real unit. And from here, you can the wire pokes out, makes its way to the frame, and then from here, snakes its way to the front through this little porthole that we have here on the frame, and this is where the plug then is found. Now, unlike the Bantam trailer, where there's a nice little convenient hook in order to loop the cable around, on the Converto, that's not the case. Also missing on the Converto, by the way, is the safety chains, which are used to connect the two eyelets found on the Jeep's tow hitch. So, if you're driving uh, your Jeep with a real Converto trailer, you might wanna be sure that that tow hitch is fully in the locked position. Otherwise, you're gonna look behind you and you're gonna see your <laughs> Converto trailer going on its own in an opposite direction. Less than ideal. 
Now, lastly, you'll notice that on the lever for the dump and the lever for the on the tailgate, you'll see a little bit of rope that is tied to each unit. This is, again, found on the real units, and the purpose for this is that with the tug of the rope, this allows you to unlock both of the levers with one pull. Which on the real one, you would do this, it would pull back this guy, pull back this guy, the bed would dump open, and the tailgate would then be able to open up and dumping out your contents all in one fell swoop. It's a very clever little design and one that once implemented on the kit does offer for some functionality. Now I will say that the, the, the lever for the tailgate is a little bit on the, I don't want to say flimsy side, but it, to overpower the string, it's better to do it from the piece itself as opposed to relying solely on the actual lever. As you can see though, the lever does actuate the component, although very slightly. Now, of course, what's the point of a trailer if you don't have anything to tow the trailer with? Well, for this, for the Converto dump trailer, this can be towed with a number of different vehicles, anywhere from the Clark CA-1 airborne bulldozer to the venerable Willys Jeep. Now, the Jeep that we have here has been seen several times on this channel, from its own model showcase video that I did it several years ago, to the more recent trailer and recoilless rifle videos that have been posted in recent months. Now, in order to tow anything with the Dragon Jeep, this can be done, but you're going to have to change out the tow hitch panel. On the stock Dragon kit, the tow hitch is designed to be a static part, and to tow anything, of course, this is going to have to be replaced. Now, on the EastCoastArmory.com website for several years, I've had this particular tow hitch set, which was a resin detail component, which replaces the stock Dragon unit. However, in recent weeks, I went ahead and phased out and retired this old resin casting for a new fully functional unit comprised of 3D printed components. However, regardless of either the old legacy resin cast ones or the new 3D printed ones, the way the piece functions is still exactly the same. To tow anything, you simply just take the lunette, open up the the hitch itself and just drop the lunette directly in place. Now, like I was alluding to before, unlike the Bantam Jeep trailers, in which they have safety chains, which connect to two little eyelets that are found on the bottom of the hitch, for, this, for the Converto, that's not the case. You simply just put into the lunette and you're ready to roll. Of course, once the piece is hitched up, you then have to retract the stanchion, which again, like I showcased before, is fully functional. And once connected, Basically, you have this type of a setup. Now, this Jeep is static. However, like I said before, the unit can be mounted to a Riddick control Jeep. And you can see from how easy everything rolls, making the transition from static to RC should be fairly simple. What isn't simple, however, is backing up. As you can see, you can easily jackknife the trailer, which is true for just about any vehicle. Now, just because I have this trailer hooked up to a Dragon Jeep kit, this trailer will also be able to work with any other 1.6 scale Jeep that's on the market, from the Hasbro to the 21st century, even the old SOTW. Of course, one consideration that has to be kept in mind is for the tow hitch itself. Now, from the Jeep, that brings us to the paint and the markings. For the paint, I utilize my standard olive drab paint that's seen on many of the builds that are found on the ECA channel. Now for the markings, it's a mix. For the stars, I utilize some decals from, I believe, a 135th scale Sherman that were in my decal bin. I think they were Dragon. Regardless of the, of the kit itself, the decals were of decent quality. Now for the USA bumper ID numbers, the, these are actually stenciled on with blue paint, which is something that was done on several military vehicle bumper ID codes around this time of the war. Finally, here we have the two patterns of ECA trailers side by side. On the right hand is the Converto, and on the left hand is the Bantam. Now, of course, the Bantam has a whole video dedicated just to itself, and here you can see now the two side by side to get an idea on the size difference between the two units.
In the end, I'm extremely thrilled on how the entire project turned out, both from its initial concept to its production, and then finally ending up with the actual production unit that I have here in hand. These units here are, are very great for enhancing a diorama scene like I have here, and also like we have here paired up with my other 1-6 scale Jeep trailer, really make for a nice spicy addition to anyone's collection. Now, even though the Converto trailer wasn't nearly as prolific or as common as the Bantam pattern, it is still nice to have one of these models now represented in 1-6 scale. And with that, that wraps up this model showcase video slash new product announcement video for the 1-6 scale Converto airborne dump trailer. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the ECA channel, which is a great way to keep in the loop of new posted content when it gets posted for not only model showcase videos but for new announcement videos and even project update videos for ongoing builds. In addition to that don't forget to like us on Facebook where it's another way to keep in the loop of both new posted content as well as also many of the older builds in both larger and smaller scales that have been posted in the past. Furthermore don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com where there are more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds, detail components, and as well as full 3D printed kits like these two over here. Thanks for watching.